because erythrocytes lack the nucleus, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and a lot of the other organelles we associate with the cell, they're not very good at repairing themselves, and they have a more limited lifespan. The lifespan of an average erythrocyte is about 120 days, or four months. Because of that, we constantly have erythrocytes that are dying, and we constantly are producing new erythrocytes to replace them. The turnover is at a rate of about 2.5 million cells per second. So every second that you listen to this lecture video, 2.5 million of your erythrocytes are dying, and another 2.5 million erythrocytes are being produced. The process that's used to produce um, not only erythrocytes, but all of the formed elements in the blood is hemopoiesis, or sometimes it's called hematopoiesis. So hemopoiesis or hematopoiesis occurs in the red bone marrow. If you recall from learning about bones, there are two types of bone marrow. Red bone marrow is where blood is made, and yellow bone marrow stores fat. In children, nearly all the marrow cavities are filled with red bone marrow that's making blood. In adults, a lot of the marrow cavities in the appendicular bones have been converted into yellow bone marrow. As you stay closer to the middle of the body, the axial bones is where we tend to find more of the red hematopoietic bone marrow in adults. Before birth, there are actually more areas in the body that will make blood. In a fetus, the liver produces blood cells and so does the spleen. And in some rare cases in adults, in cases of severe anemia, the spleen can still help produce some additional red blood cells if necessary. The process of hemopoiesis begins with a hematopoietic stem cell. This hematopoietic stem cell has the ability to differentiate into any of the different types of cells that we see in the blood, erythrocytes, platelets, or any of the different types of leukocytes. Because this one cell has the ability to produce many cell types, we call it multipotent. Multipotent means has the ability to produce or give rise to many different cell types. And when we're going to be making red blood cells, we need to start with this multipotent hematopoietic stem cell. When we're looking specifically at the pathway that leads to the production of erythrocytes, that's called erythropoiesis. So hematopoiesis refers to producing any of the formed elements of the blood, and erythropoiesis is the pathway that leads specifically to the red blood cells. Erythropoiesis depends on the hormone erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone that stimulates our multipotent hemopoietic stem cell to divide and differentiate into erythroblasts. Erythroblasts are really important cells. Erythroblasts are cells that are destined to eventually become erythrocytes, but they have a couple important things they need to do first. If we begin by looking at the structure of an erythroblast, an erythroblast is a full cell. It has a nucleus, it has ribosomes, it has endoplasmic reticulum, it has mitochondria. The important role of the erythroblast is twofold. One, erythroblasts divide to give rise to more erythroblasts. So you can start with one erythroblast that will divide to make many erythroblasts, all of which will eventually become erythrocytes. So that increases the number of erythrocytes that can be made from that single cell. The other role of the erythroblasts is protein synthesis. They are going to be working like crazy to make as much protein as they can. And what protein do you think is the really important one that erythroblasts are going to be producing? That most important protein that we need in erythroblasts, that we need in our erythrocytes so they can carry oxygen, is hemoglobin. So erythroblasts divide like crazy to make more, and they carry out a lot of protein synthesis to make the hemoglobin that we need to carry oxygen. This process requires a lot of resources. You need iron to be able to make the hemoglobin. You need amino acids to be able to make the protein part of the hemoglobin. Um, you need folic acid and vitamin B12, which are important for cell division. Um, and you need a lot of energy, a lot of ATP for the protein synthesis and cell division. So erythropoiesis requires a lot of resources. If you don't have those resources, you won't make the number of erythrocytes necessary, and that can lead to things like anemia. 
Once the erythroblast has divided as much as it needs to and produced all of the hemoglobin that it needs, the erythroblast kicks out all of the extra organelles. It gets rid of the nucleus, it gets rid of the mitochondria, the ribosomes, all those things that it isn't going to need as a mature erythrocyte. At this point, we have what's called a reticulocyte. The reticulocyte then leaves the bone marrow and goes into the blood vessels, and in the blood vessels it finally matures into the fully functioning biconcave disc-shaped oxygen-carrying cell that we call an erythrocyte. Now it's important that this process of erythropoiesis is regulated so that we make as many red blood cells as we need, but we don't make too many red blood cells. This can be a little bit tricky because sometimes you lose red blood cells and need to make more than usual, or sometimes you may have more than you need and you need to make fewer than usual. The process of erythropoiesis is regulated so that we make as many red blood cells as we need, and it's regulated by the oxygen level. Since erythrocytes are carrying oxygen, it makes sense that we use the level of oxygen in the tissues to determine whether we have an adequate number of erythrocytes or not. If you have enough erythrocytes, you should have a good level of oxygen in your tissues. If you don't have enough erythrocytes, your oxygen levels are going to be too low. The oxygen is measured in two important organs, the liver and the kidneys. When the liver and the kidneys detect a low level of oxygen, the liver and the kidneys release the hormone erythropoietin. And as we already discussed, erythropoietin stimulates the production of erythroblasts so that you get more erythrocytes. Once you have more erythrocytes in the blood, then the blood can carry more oxygen, oxygen levels in the tissue come up, and then you stop making so much erythropoietin. This is a great example of a negative feedback mechanism that allows us to get more erythrocytes when we need them, or to produce fewer erythrocytes when we already have enough.